A LAN is a group of devices connected to a single Ethernet network. A broadcast message is a message that reaches all devices in the network. Devices use broadcast messages to perform many essential tasks. The more devices you add to a network, the more broadcast messages it will have. Broadcast messages reduce network performance. To improve network performance, administrators break the LAN network into smaller LANs. When you break a large LAN into smaller LANs, you create VLANs. VLANs are smaller LANs. VLANs create a boundary for broadcast messages. A broadcast message generated in a VLAN reaches all devices inside the VLAN. It does not go outside the VLAN. If two devices belong to different VLANs, they do not exchange broadcast messages. Before we learn how VLANs work, we need to understand how switches learn the MAC addresses of the connected devices and make forwarding decisions. A switch has many ports. It forwards an incoming frame only from the port connected to the destination device of the frame. We can divide this process into three phases, learning, decision-making, and forwarding. Let us understand these phases in detail. In the learning phase, a switch learns the addresses of all connected devices and saves them into a table known as the CAM table. It uses incoming frames to learn the addresses. Let us understand this process through an example. When a PC wants to send a data stream, it breaks the data stream into small pieces, known as segments. There are two types of addresses, software addresses, and hardware addresses. The device needs to attach both types of addresses to each segment. It first adds software addresses. Software addresses are also known as IP addresses. A segment with IP addresses is known as a packet. After adding the software addresses, the device attaches the hardware addresses. Hardware addresses are also known as MAC addresses. A packet with MAC addresses is known as a frame. A switch understands and uses only hardware addresses to process frames. When it receives a frame, it reads the source MAC address and destination MAC address of the frame. It uses the source address to learn about the connected device. It uses the destination address to make forwarding decision. It saves source addresses in a table known as the CAM table. The CAM table has three fields, MAC address, port, and aging. In the MAC address field, it saves the MAC address the frame has in the source field. In the port field, it saves the port's information on which the switch received the frame. In the aging field, it saves a timer. It assigns a separate timer to each entry of the CAM table. This timer is used to age out old entries from the CAM table, allowing room to store new entries. A switch uses a relatively simple concept to forward a frame. It finds the destination MAC address of the incoming frame in the CAM table. If the CAM table has an entry for the destination MAC address, it forwards the frame from the port mentioned in the entry. If the CAM table does not have an entry for the destination MAC address, it forward the frame from all ports except the port on which it arrived. The process of forwarding a frame from all ports except the port on which it arrived is called frame flooding. A switch floods a frame if it has an unknown unicast, multicast, or broadcast address in the destination address field. An unknown unicast address is an address that is not available in the CAM table. A multicast address belongs to a group of devices. A broadcast address belongs to all devices on the local network. Multicast and broadcast are destination-only addresses. These addresses are never used in the source address field of a frame. Since these addresses are never used in the source address field of a frame and a switch uses the frame source field to learn addresses, a switch never learns about these addresses. These addresses always remain unknown to the switch. And as we know, a switch always floods a frame having an unknown address in the destination address field. Because of this, a frame having an unknown unicast, multicast, or broadcast address in the destination address is always flooded by the switch. After making a forwarding decision, the switch finds ports having the same VLAN configuration as the incoming port. It forwards the frame only from the ports having the same VLAN configuration. By default, all switch ports belong to VLAN 1. VLAN 1 is the default VLAN on all Cisco switches. We can create custom VLANs in global configuration mode and apply them to switch ports. We will learn this process later in this video. If two switch ports belong to different VLANs, they do not share broadcast messages. If two ports belong to the same VLAN, they share broadcast messages. Let us understand this process through an example. PC1 generates a unicast frame for PC4. The MAC address of PC4 is MAC4. It configures the value MAC4 in the destination address field of the frame. The frame reaches the switch on the port 1. The switch checks the CAM table to make the forwarding decision. 
the CAM table has an entry for the destination address MAC4. From this entry, the switch decides to forward the frame from port 7. After making the forwarding decision, the switch checks the VLAN configuration. If the destination port's VLAN ID matches the source port's VLAN ID, it forwards the frame. If the destination port's VLAN ID does not match the source port's VLAN ID, it discards the frame. Since we haven't changed the default VLAN ID of any port so far and the default VLAN ID of all ports is 1, the VLAN ID of the source and destination ports match. The switch forwards the frame from port 7 and the frame reaches the PC4. Now suppose, PC1 generates a broadcast frame. It configures the broadcast address and the destination address field of the frame. The frame reaches the switch on the port 1. The switch checks the CAM table to make the forwarding decision. As explained earlier, a broadcast is a destination-only address. A switch never learns and adds this address to the CAM table. Since the CAM table has no entry for the broadcast address, the switch decides to forward it from all ports. After making the forwarding decision, the switch checks the VLAN configuration to finalize the ports. Since all ports have the default VLAN ID, it forwards the frame from all ports except the port on which it received the frame. Now suppose, we want the broadcast originating from PC1 to reach only PC2 and 3. We don't want them to reach PC4. In this situation, we need to change the default VLAN ID of ports 1, 2, and 8. Let us suppose, we change the default VLAN ID of these ports to 10. Now let us monitor another broadcast frame originating from PC1 to understand how the switch will process broadcast frames after this change. PC1 generates the broadcast frame. The frame reaches port 1. As usual, the switch checks the CAM table to decide the forwarding ports. Since the CAM table has no entry for the destination address, the switch decides to forward the frame from all ports except the source port. After selecting the forwarding ports, it matches their VLAN ID with the source port. Since the VLAN ID of ports 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 do not match the VLAN ID of the source port, it excludes these ports from the forwarding ports. After excluding the port having the different VLAN ID, it forwards the broadcast frame only from the ports having the same VLAN ID. The switch uses the same steps for multicast frames. This way, VLANs allow us to create a group of devices that can exchange broadcast and multicast messages. Packet Tracer is network simulator software. Cisco developed it for its certification program. It includes all the essential devices we need to practice all entry-level Cisco certification programs. Click Network Devices, select a switch, and drag it to the workspace. Now select End Devices and drag four PCs to the workspace. We will use these PCs and this switch to simulate the example discussed in this video. To connect these PCs to the switch, we use a copper straight-through cable. We will connect PCs to the switch in the sequence. We will connect the first PC to the first Ethernet port. The second PC to the second Ethernet port and so on. You can connect PCs to any available ports. However, connecting them in a sequence makes the testing and debugging process easier. To understand how VLAN works, we will generate broadcast frames from this PC and monitor how the switch processes them. To generate broadcast frames, we need to assign IP configurations to these PCs. I am assigning an IP configuration from the subnet 10.0.0.0/8. You can assign an IP configuration from any IP subnet you prefer. If you want to use different IP configurations, just make sure you use the IP configurations from the same IP subnet. Computers from different IP subnets cannot communicate directly. As mentioned earlier, a switch learns the MAC address of a PC only when it receives a frame from the PC. So far, this switch hasn't received any frame from any of these PCs. Since it has not received any frame from these PCs, it does not know the MAC addresses of these PCs. To verify it, we can view the CAM table of this switch. We use the show MAC address table command to view the CAM table entries. As we can see here, the CAM table is empty. It verifies the switch uses the incoming frame source address to build the CAM table. This switch will learn the MAC addresses of these PCs when it receives frames from these PCs. We can use the ping command to send frames and test connectivity between these PCs. The ping command sends ICMP echo messages to the destination system. If the destination system is up, it replies to the echo messages. As we can see here, PC1 is getting replies from these PCs. It verifies all PCs have connectivity. Now let us view the CAM table again. As we can see here, now the CAM table has entries for these PCs. 
The switch learned these addresses from the frames the ping command sent for ICMP echo messages. Since the ping command sends requests to a specific host and broadcast and multicast addresses belong to many hosts, we cannot use it to send broadcast frames from the command prompt. To verify it, let's send ICMP echo messages to the local broadcast address. As we can see here, the ping command failed to find the host having this address. It happened because this address doesn't belong to a single host on the network. It belongs to all hosts of the network. It is a broadcast address. If we want to use the ping command to send the broadcast frames, we have to use the traffic generator. It can generate raw traffic for testing. To generate broadcast traffic for the ping command, we have to use the local broadcast address in the destination address field. Set the sequence number to 1 and keep the remaining settings as they are. These settings control the frequency of the traffic. This option sends a single frame. To send periodic frames, we select this option. We specify the time interval between two continuous frames in this field. We can't view this traffic in the real-time mode. To view these broadcast frames, we need to change the workspace mode to simulation. In simulation mode, the packet tracer simulates all events of the selected protocols. By default, it selects all supported protocols. To select a custom protocol, first, we need to unselect all protocols. To select a custom protocol, we use the edit filter option. It displays a list of all supported protocols categorized in menus. Select the ICMP protocol available in the IP4 menu. Now let us send the broadcast frames from PC1. In simulation mode, we can control the flow of events from here. We can start, stop, and pause the movement of the frame from here. Let us start the process. Since this frame has the broadcast address in the destination address field, the switch decides to flood it from all ports. After making the forwarding decision, it checks the VLAN configuration on all ports and forwards the frame from ports having the source port's VLAN ID. Since we haven't changed the VLAN ID of any port, it forwards the frame from all ports. The frame reaches all connected devices. Based on the type of the broadcast message, a destination device replies to the message. Since it is an ICMP echo message, these PCs reply with their messages. Reply messages reach back to the source device. Devices use broadcast messages to perform many essential tasks. The more devices you add to a network, the more broadcast messages it will have. Broadcast messages reduce network performance. To improve network performance, administrators create VLANs. VLANs create a boundary for broadcast messages. A broadcast message generated in a VLAN reaches all devices inside the VLAN. It does not go outside the VLAN. If two devices belong to different VLANs, they do not exchange broadcast messages. To understand it practically, we will create a custom VLAN and put three pieces in it. But before that, we have to pause the event tracker and reset the simulation. Now let us open the switch again. We create VLANs in global configuration mode. To create a VLAN, we use the VLAN command. This command needs a number as an argument. This command creates VLAN 10 and enters VLAN configuration mode. VLAN configuration mode allows us to configure additional parameters. We do not need to configure any additional parameters for this exercise. By default, all ports belong to VLAN 1. To create a custom VLAN group, we need to change the default VLAN ID of member ports. We use the switch port access VLAN command to change or assign the new VLAN ID. We need to change the default VLAN ID of all ports we want to make the member of the new VLAN group. Here we change the default VLAN ID of ports 1, 2, and 3. Now these ports are members of VLAN 10. To verify it, we can use the show VLAN brief command. This command displays the current VLAN configuration. As we can see here, ports 1, 2, and 3 belong to VLAN 10, and the remaining ports belong to default VLAN 1. Devices connected to ports 1, 2, and 3 will share broadcast messages. They will not share broadcast messages with other devices. To verify it, we will send broadcast messages from PC1 again. If broadcast messages originating from PC1 will reach only PC2 and PC3, it will verify our setup. Before we test our setup, we need to wait for a few seconds. When we change the VLAN ID of any port, the switch resets the port. The port takes a few seconds to come up again. Wait until all ports come up again. Now, let us resume the simulation. As we can see here, PC4 is no longer receiving broadcast messages originating from PC1. Only PC2 and 3 which are the members of PC1's VLAN group are receiving broadcast messages. It verifies the VLAN configuration we made on the switch. 
That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.